exciting investment uh, from the aspect of the law in our country. Um, yeah, so I mean to start with, uh, let's, put it, let's look at the Board of Investment, you know, this way. It was initially established, you know, back in the late 1970s in order to facilitate export processing zones in Sri Lanka. And they did a fab fabulous job, I would say. It was quite successful and we have our two or three free trade zones which are operating beautifully. And then there were various amendments introduced to the BOI Act. And uh, then the role of the BOI slightly changed. It tried to facilitate other types of foreign direct investment coming in. And for a while within the BOI, there was another entity called the Bureau of uh, Infrastructure Investment, BII, uh, which was uh, promoting uh, infrastructure investment in Sri Lanka with the participation of the private sector. They did a fabulous job. And even during the height of war, I would say that the BOI was very active in bringing in investment. But having said that, if you look at the current context, Sri Lanka is probably going through the worst crisis that we have faced since independence. So in that context, when you consider whether it would be now possible for us to reap the benefits of our laws and policies, you know, as we did before, and uh, whether there would be any adverse uh, impacts on the forward march of the government towards, uh, you know, taking Sri Lanka from a developing state to a developed state, uh, there are a lot of questions that, you know, that come to my mind. Now, in order to uh, explain this to the spectators, let's, let's, or, the, or the listeners and the followers, let's, let's look at it this way. In the global system, there are approximately about 200 countries in the UN system. Yeah. Out of these, about 150 are considered developing countries. Now, if you look at the Asian region, of these 150, about 40 countries are in the Asian region. If you want to be even more focused and look at South Asia, about eight of these countries are in the South Asian region. Almost the huge all, market. Yeah, almost the entire South Asian region. That is. Exactly, almost the entire South Asian region, and which uh, amounts to about approximately one fourth of the world population. So, if an investor is brave enough to take his or her, you know, or its investment into a developing country, overlooking developed nations where you know investment perhaps could be more easily facilitated and ease of doing business and all that uh, is uh, much better. Uh, then there is a wide choice, you know, even in Asia there are 40 countries. Yeah. So out of these 40 countries, when you want to select or even consider Sri Lanka, any prudent investor would look at variety of factors to see whether Sri Lanka would be a hot investment destination yeah. uh, for the investor to come in. Yeah. So then what are these questions that they are looking at? Now, typically, an uh, investor would look at the regulatory environment, mm. the laws and policies in the country, and do they facilitate investment, do they provide for investment protection, and so on. Then, the investor would look at uh, whether there is a steady system of governance, steady and transparent system of governance. Right. Then, the investor would look at whether there is a corruption-free uh, free procurement process in this country to go. Then they would also want to see whether the investment that they made in the country can be recovered. Right, right. And then their you know, earnings and profits can be repatriated easily. Then they would look at what are the investment concessions that this destination is offering compared to the other destinations. Right. Right. Then the political stability. Availability of uh, infrastructure. Now say for example, if you want to put a, a multi-story, let's say a mixed development project, or even if you want to do a airport or seaport, the road infrastructure, the energy infrastructure, the telecommunication infrastructure, all those support infrastructures have to be in place. Now, when you take all this into consideration, currently the transport system in Sri Lanka is a mess. Mm. We have an energy crisis. We are in political turmoil, yeah. right? The government, yes, there is a government in place, but are they the... Uh, the, is the government the chosen government of the people at the election? So all these questions come in. And maybe next two years we are running into elections, but a lot of people are still protesting. And there are various doubts, you know, even among the local citizens as to where the country is heading. So in this situation, if you are to attract investors, and having said that in Asia there are 40 developing countries, some of these markets are much bigger. Sri Lanka has 25 million 
population. If you take Bangladesh, it has about 180 to 190 million. And the Bangladesh economy is doing much better than the Sri Lankan economy now. And even countries like Nepal and so on, if you look at the, the uh, GDP growth, uh, Sri Lanka is perhaps the lowest in South Asia. Sure. So taking all this into consideration, irrespective of whatever measures that we take, at least in the near term, it will be very difficult to attract foreign direct investment. That we have to keep in mind. But having said that, I don't think the government or the policymakers should give up, but we should do what is necessary, which we can talk about later, in order to give the necessary confidence to the investors to choose Sri Lanka as an investment destination. It can be done, but may not be in during a short period of time. We will have to perhaps put some mid-term and long-term policies in place.